First this afternoon, the cold temperatures and snow arrived a bit earlier than we expected, so many pet owners might not be prepared to take care of their cat and dog in cold weather. That's the focus of our Find a Friend segment today, sponsored by our friends at Rascal Animal Hospital. Joining me today is Dr. Crystal Decker from Rascal Animal Hospital, and she has a friend with her. Dr. Decker, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Before we get to this care of our pets in the cold weather, we have a little buddy here who needs a home. Yes, this is Mr. Pounce. He is about a six-month-old um, neutered male kitten. He's from Colony Cats and he is looking for a forever home. He's probably great with children, other cats, dogs as well. So he's a overall very social, interactive, fun little kitty. He seems to have a good disposition. He's yes. been sitting here for a while and I know <laughs> cats don't necessarily like to be held. They're pretty independent, but he's been okay. We yes. just sitting in your lap. He's not too bad. <laughs> but if he gets a little, you know, antsy, we have his cage yes. and you can put him down. <laughs> You know, it's interesting, um, Dr. Decker, when we talk about cold weather and different types of dogs that need different type of protection um, from the elements. I have a little dog that doesn't have a lot of hair, and when it gets colder, I put a sweater on him, and I feel ridiculous doing it. And then I think, does this dog really need the sweater, or is this only making me feel better? What? What? Yeah, so a lot of times, yeah, they are. We feel silly putting pets in jackets and sweaters, but actually our smaller breed dogs. And he is. Dogs that have short hair coats. Um, and some of the thinner dogs, such as greyhounds um, and stuff like that, a lot of times do need jackets. <laughs> <laughs> you want to put him in his little cage. There you go, um, Mr. Pound. We're going to find a, um, a home for you, no matter what. There you go, um, buddy. So, yeah, they often do need jackets to help keep them warm because their um, body bass isn't the same as our, our bigger fur dogs. And so it helps keep them warm and, and keep them safe when they go outdoors. And the other thing I've noticed is we walk a lot in the wintertime outside and his paws can get irritated. I don't know if it's necessarily from salt or just the snow itself. How do we take care of that as a pet owner? So a few important things. One, we want to make sure on our own properties, at least we can't control everyone else, but we want to use pet friendly salt on the ground to, to melt the snow and the ice. Um, and then when we do take our pets for walks, we want to make sure that when we come in, we, we wipe their feet very well. That salt can get into their feet, cause irritation, but also they can lick it and cause um, toxins. So and that can make them sick, not just on their feet, but internally as well. Just so, with regular water? Just yep, just it. some warm, uh, just get a warm wet paper towel and you can just wipe their feet off. Yep, some people even use, um, they have little booties for pets as well that, that you can use for the cold weather months. So We're just stressing them all up. <laughs> and then you go to the other spectrum and there are folks that have their pets outside all the time, even in the really severe winter months. Is it good for a pet to be outside? And I know if, they, if people say, they has, he has a dog house, I give them water. What are your thoughts on that? So ideally we don't have our pets outside when it's less than 30 to 32 degrees mm -hmm. outside. Um, unfortunately, some people may not have a situation where they really can bring their pets in or that's just not you know the lifestyle they intended for their particular pet. So if people are gonna have a pet outdoors, they need to make sure that they have a nice um, housing environment for them where they are covered and protected from the wind. Would also like to really put a lot of straw and bedding in that um, area so that they have an area to keep warm in. Another important thing is make sure they have nice fresh water at all times. So you may have to change the water several times a day so that it doesn't freeze up. And we're not just talking about dogs here, but cats too. There are a yep. lot of outdoor cats people say and they go, well, he's an outdoor cat. Yep. And another important thing to mention, um, since you mentioned outdoor cats, is when we're going out to warm our cars up in the morning, may want to knock on the hood of the car or the wheels um, because a lot of cats will get into our um, engines in the evening or in the wheel wells and they'll sleep there to provide warmth. So that's another thing where cats are at risk for getting um, injury that way. So we want to make sure we we do that kind of stuff as well. You also mentioned that dogs can still carry fleas this time of year, which yes. I thought it, the freezing temperatures are killing all the fleas. Not so much. Not so much because your pets have brought the fleas in in the warmer months and so they've laid eggs in the house. So when we turn the heat on, when we vacuum our homes, we actually stimulate those flea eggs to hatch and we still get fleas. So it's important that you use a veterinary approved product uh, flea product all year round on your pet to, to prevent fleas. And if you do that, you should pretty much take care of the problem, right? Yes. Great stuff to remember. Thank you, Dr. Decker. Hopefully, Mr. Pounce, is that his name? Pouncer? <laughs> yes, Pounce. Mr. Pounce is going to get adopted. <laughs> and for more information on today's Find a Friend, as well as the Rascal Animal Hospital, go to our website, NBC4i.com, and click on the daytime icon.